to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is our uh, NPC North American Classic Physique Class A champ and new IFBB pro, Antonio Diaz. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now you got a good story, and uh, I wanted to uh, showcase it a little bit. I love these uh, stories of people who've overcome a lot of obstacles to achieve, uh, you know, their goals. And uh, you, uh, it's funny because you were involved with uh, football in high school, and you, you're from Long Island out uh, out east, so we kind of have that little kinship right there. I'm from the Long Island as well, but uh, you know, you also were involved in track and field. You know, you uh, found out that you were a good sprinter, um, and. Yep. That's a, a rare talent, and you were able to take that talent and actually go to college with that, which is which is a pretty awesome thing. Um, when you are at that elite level of like you know of any sport, okay, let's take away the bodybuilding for a minute. Um, you know, is that something that comes natural to you? I always ask, like to ask people this, or is this something that you worked right. really hard to to to, to learn? Um, I think it's something. I think it's a. Um, I don't think it comes natural. Um, I think it's environmental. Uh, but you definitely learn to, um, you know, like like I always use Kobe Bryant, for example, Michael Jordan, these elite people. There's something, there's that instinct in them, especially D1 athletes. Yeah. They have that instinct in them. Um, but it's not something that you could, like, it's not something, it, and it could be nurture. It could be that. Actually, I'm changing. It could be nature. Yeah. It could be natural because, again, I got my brother's same parents, completely right. opposite. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you got you have natural speed, but then you nurtured it by learning how to harness that Correct. speed uh, in, in a in a track and field sense. You know. Yes. Who was a who was a big influence uh, on your sporting, I guess, career? At least from a perspective of when you first got started and you learned that, hey, I'm a really good runner. Um, I looked up to uh, Maurice Green. Um, yeah, he's good. He was he was a uh, um, you know like a ninety sprinter, yeah. eighty sprinter. I looked up to um, Tyson Gay, which is another American sprinter. Absolutely great. Um, even Asafo Powell, like these people, really um, inspired me a lot. Now, your what's what your? Uh, I know your dad. You said earlier when I was interviewing you, uh, pre-interviewing, you said your dad is from Puerto Rico. What what? Uh, where's your mom from? So uh, my mother's from from Long Island, Riverhead. Okay. Um, yeah, my dad's from Puerto Rico, Catalina. Um, and he's, he's been here for about over 20 something years, but my mother's from Long Island. So you're like part Spanish, part, uh, African American. Correct. So you got the good, you got the good genetics going on there. That helps. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. You got to think you might, you might not have had a good relationship with your parents, but you, you got good <laughs> genetics from your parents, right? Right. Right. We now up the way. you grew up with a very difficult, you know, we are making light of this, but it was, you had a very difficult yeah. family situation growing up. Yes. Explain to us yep. the dynamics of what it was like as, as a child. So, you know, as a, you know, at a young age, um, I re vividly remember like three or four years old, I remember my mother walking us down the street, right? Um, and the next minute I knew I didn't see my mother in, in four to five years from that point. Wow. Um, and when the, what ended up happening was she ended up having a party, CPS was called, but, you know, being so little, I never knew, you know, the lifestyle my mother lived. So someone felt it was unsafe. Um, and from that point, I mean, she fought to get us back. Now, what happened was she ended up giving us to her friends temporarily, and they ended up signing papers, and we never went back with her. So basically, your mom was doing drugs on the street. Yep. And someone reported her? Is that what happened? So she had a party, um, and someone ended up calling CPS. So they showed up that morning. Oh. And clearly within violation, um, and they were like, listen, you have two choices. You can either... You know, they come with us or you bring them to someone. Oh, I see. And, um, yep. So she ended up bringing us to her So you, uh, they wanted you out of that drug environment. As, and, exactly. And what yep. was that? You, how many? You and your, what do you have, two sisters and a brother, you said? So it was me my, and my brother at the time. My okay. little sister, I think, was, was already down, had a relationship with them already. Okay. She was like one. Um, and then my older sister was already in foster care. Okay, so now you went, you went to some of your mom's friend's house and, and they took you in. Yes. And, yep. you know, I, I can't imagine, I don't, I, I can't fathom because I, I had, you know, a different childhood, but at four years old to be removed from your mother's house, whether your mother was doing things that she shouldn't have been doing or not, you don't understand that as a four year old. I mean, right. what go, I mean, do you remember what your, the feelings were when they, when they removed you from your mother's household? 
Well, what I do remember is I we we were removed. I went with like four different people before I was I, I was I was actually able to be with one person for the next what seventeen years of my right, life. Right. But I bounced around house to house. My oh. brother went with the sister. I bounced around. And the one thing I can vividly remember, man, and this is just me being transparent, is like, is my mother coming back? You know what I mean? Like, right. you know, as a four year old, you know who your mother is, right? Right. And things were rough. Things were rough. It was not your traditional way of being raised. Right. You know what I mean? I didn't I did not have it wasn't that hot plate three meals, go outside, play toys. It was nothing like that. Like, and I tell people I was isolated. I was isolated. So I got a great imagination through all my adversity. I was able to become, it helped me become a better athlete. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It really helped me through those dark times on the track or football or in the gym right. to not give up, to dig deep, you know, through those dark days as a child, you know what I mean? So, right. um, you know, I take the positive from it. It was tough, but I take the positive from it. I have to imagine when you're running or when you're playing sports and you're feeling pain, even when you're bodybuilding and you're dieting now, you probably laugh at that because you're probably like, this is, a, this is like fun pain. This is not like deep emotional pain or, or, or you know, not, not getting you know, a meal or your mom not being around. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's pain, you know? Yes. So you probably can go to a place where other people can't go to suffering-wise. Yes. yes. It's funny you mention that because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm um, starting up my own leadership consulting business. And, you know, every day on my Instagram, I get up to inspire people. And, you know, meeting with the business consultants and the business developer, they're always like, you know, what are formulas? What are things you can use that are tangible that can help people overcome? And I said, to be honest with you, man, there are places that I can tap into that unless you've been there, I, it's, it's hard for me to explain to you. Yeah. So that's why it's hard for me to give up. Because literally, like, do you think a diet is bad? Try not eating or eating spoiled food to, to, to make it through the night. Right. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, I diet all day. I treadmill all day. Like, this stuff is, it's a luxury. Right. Put it that way. Right. As crazy as it sounds. No, I can relate to it. I Look, I know. I, I, I'm sure I had my own deep suppressed emotional pain. Also, I lost my mom but when I was 14. Obviously, it wasn't oh, wow. the same situation as you had. But... I think that when I would, you know, find tough times when I didn't want to, you know, necessarily I was hungry, you know, dieting for a show. I'm sure I went to that place unconsciously, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, you find your pain and you go there and say, hey, you know what, that, this isn't so bad. This is, this is going to be over. <laughs> this will be over in, in four weeks, you know. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I'll be Absolutely. eating whatever I want in four weeks. It's not a, not a big deal, really. It's kind of yeah. defer gratification yep. at this point. So you, when you found the final home that you were in for 17 years, was that a, was that a very stable place? I mean, did you did you feel comfortable there, or was so, it? Well, I, <laughs> so I look back and my perspective has changed, but I can tell you this: um, for the sake of time, the things I've learned at, through that experience, mm -hmm. everything I do moving forward is completely contrary to the things I've experienced. So put it this way, I graduated high school and they thought it was a celebration, right? Yeah. I'm like, that's just the tipping point. I stayed in school, I didn't get anyone pregnant, I didn't yeah. sell drugs, I right. didn't drop out. Listen, I, I showed up to school every single day. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I tell people, I was in fourth and fifth grade, I was on probation, I had a probation officer, I was bad. Right. I was kicked out for fighting this and that, but it, when I realized where the trauma came from and why I was the way I was, I said, I don't want to be this person. I don't want people to know me for this person. Right. And I, I met some people in my life, two teachers who made an, a major impact on my life. Right. They? And they, they're in my life till this day. Right. And I said, I am blessed to, to have, and I accidentally hurt them. And I see that they cared about me. And that changed so much, man. Cause it showed me how to love, right. you know what I mean? Because I was never told as a child, I love you. Or hugged, right. you know. What I mean? Imagine that. So now I'm married, happily married, yeah. and I'm able to do these things with my wife, be the, a great father, a great husband. Right. You know, obviously I'm a Christian, so that taught me a lot. But I tell people like, listen, if you really want to get something done, you can. You can make an excuse, me, an excuse, or right. you can make adjustments and figure it out. Right. I've been through it. Right. You know. No, that's great. How how old are your kids? I got a five-year-old, three, and a one-year-old. So we're big, and they're all oh, boys. That's exactly what I got, except I'm um, 20 years older than you. So <laughs> you're way more mature than I am. <laughs> I have the exact same age kids. That's funny. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's good. It's yeah, they're at a fun age now, from what I understand. But uh, they'll drive you crazy, oh. though. I don't know how yeah, you. I, I don't know how you dieted and, and slept enough at night and stuff like that. That's a rough age. I have there. a great wife. My wife is super yeah, she supportive, must be. man. She must be. super supportive. There's no way I would have made it. No way. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Now, when you got uh, obviously you were up in Syracuse, you were running yep. track. You get out of that. Now, how do you get introduced to the bodybuilding world? So I, I, after I graduated from SU, I went over and ran for Dominican Republic on their national federation team. Oh, wow. Cool. And at the time, yep, we were going to the Olympics. It was 2000, I believe, 16 Olympics was. One of those years, we were training for that. I went over. I ended up getting a uh, um, captain spot on the team, worked my butt off. Right. Um, but the problem was that there was, there was a lack of nutrition, and we didn't have any vitamins. So I'm like, listen, guys, these guys are in the States. They have access to the best stuff. We're right. working hard. But you're working harder than you need to. It's like driving a car on rims, right? Sure. Um, so I end up coming back to the States and I, I said, I gotta start my professional career. I didn't get into bodybuilding until late. If I knew what I knew now, I would have been gotten to it. Yeah, you got but, in like in your late twenties, right? Yeah, I I started by, no, my I was 30. I believe I was I've been oh, 2008. I started in 2018 in in like May. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. So I start, but I always like kind of worked out mm. um, and people would tell me all the time, hey, man, you should get in a body. But I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I could, you know, get on stage with some trunks, man. I don't. But I didn't know much about the sport. Right. So I said, you know what? Let me give it a shot. And I can tell you this. The, I said, I love working out. The minute I said I can compete and all I got to do is look great, do something I love. Yeah. And I could potentially get paid. Right. Are you, oh, this is like, it's over. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. You had, um, uh, you, you ran a 4.2, a 40 in, uh, I guess yeah. it was what, college, high school around that area? In high school, yep. Yeah. Can you still run now? You think you could still do it? I, I, so, so I have very, very good legs. Yeah. And I still have a lot of fast. So I'm still, I'm still fast. Can I run a 4.2 right now? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'd probably be happy if I ran a 4.6. But if I trained, I could. I, w I don't doubt that. Yeah, we, we I gotta. Know. I want to hold the the fastest man in bodybuilding. We should do like a forty yard dash, like get the oh, fastest guys it. in bodybuilding. Would that would be it. fun, wouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. I see. Brian put out a video a while ago, like the fastest bodybuilder, and I'm like, only if they knew, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, there's a, but there's a couple guys that I've interviewed that were track guys. I bet you, you know, we can get we can get some seriously cool races going. Them, I mean, if we can, that'd uh, be cool. No, I think that'd be cool. <laughs> talk about uh, interest. They should have that as like a little subdivision, you know, almost. There. Yeah. <laughs> but now you, uh, 2018, you uh, you competed for the first time. You mentioned uh, in 19 last year, you placed eighth at the North American in the classic division. This year, obviously, at the 2020 North American, you win Class A, you get your pro card. What changed dramatically from last year to this year? Because that's a big, big jump, you know, to go from eighth place to second, uh, to first place. Right. So, so there was a few, there was a few important uh, variables that changed. One was I didn't eat a meal for three hours before I went on stage because the coach I had just happened to be from Washington. So our line of communication was off <laughs> so i didn't even know what to do i'm freaking out like what should i ate a random rice cake yeah. i see people backstage pumping up eating candy and i'm scrambling right um so when i went on stage my conditioning placed me that high uh, because again i didn't eat since 6 45 we got on stage around 10 something that's funny you know yeah um another factor was um diet so what i realized with me i have a fast metabolism i was eating i had a super clean diet yeah. When I change, when my nutrition is now changed my diet and threw in more things like, you know, so I'll have like post-workout cereal and a bait. My body absorbed that quick right. and it actually made me like tighter. So we did a little bit more flexible. Like I have, I had a cheat meal every week and right. believe it or not that the diet was the biggest change. But I think being an athlete and wanting and wanting to win. Yeah was probably the biggest jump because I literally studied. I watched videos day in and night on the treadmill at home because right. I'm like, there's no reason I shouldn't be next to these guys. There's no reason. Right. So the pro card wasn't even like, I need my pro card. The pro card was, it's going to get me to the door so I can prove to the world that I'm supposed to be there. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, so you look great. I mean, I saw you, I looked at your pictures. I was like, wow. I mean, you were very impressive. I mean, the guy who won the overall is impressive, but uh, you were very impressive as well. I have to imagine you were, you know, you were pretty close to him in points for the overall. He told me, it's funny. He reached out to me on Instagram. He said he thought I won. 
<laughs> I was like, yeah, man, I wish. <laughs> you know what the Nobody truth is? Did. At the end of the day, no one will remember anyone who won. It's, it's, right. it's who's ever got the pro card. <laughs> you know, we were talking about this on After Hours today. You know, we were saying how it used to be very prestigious, you know, to get that pro card. It was so hard to get a pro card. So prestigious. Nowadays, it's like the pro card, like you said, is like a stepping stone to the pros. Now, win a pro show. That's kind of like the, what the way getting a pro card was 15 years ago, you know? Gotcha. So. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I view it, right? Like, I, I look at the numbers of the amount of people that's awarded pro cards a year. I said, okay, if I get my pro card, okay, it puts me in a one percentile, but I want to be in the in a 0.5 right, percentile. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So sure. now, what, that, and that's why I don't mind taking a year off because you got, if you look at my shows, I did three shows. Yeah. I do a lot of shows. I did more training than I did shows. Right. Right. So now I'm like, what? Oh, I think we hit a little hiccup there in the connection. Let's see if we can get him back. It's funny, Antonio reminds me so much of Andre Ferguson. I feel like I'm talking to Andre Ferguson's brother right here. But we're going to get him back. Well, everything I've been through as a child. Okay, there we go. It's are. not even close. Oh, you know what, Antonio, we, you got kind of got cut off a little bit there. Just uh, kind of give us a rehash of what you were saying. Oh, no, I was saying the reason, you know, I can get up at 4 o'clock in the morning yeah. and be at the gym. Well, one was to have more family time. Sure. with my family but the, another one was because i want to separate myself i said everybody's working out at 5 p.m yeah i want to separate myself what's going to make me different you yeah. know what i mean so i get up you know what I mean? i'm tired man yeah but guess what you dig deep yeah. you dig deep you use those dark stories you use that, that that experience that trauma and literally i get to the gym and i'm ready to go cool well, you're an IFBB pro now. You've got a pro card. Uh, do you plan on using it this year? I know we were talking a little bit off camera about yeah. this. So are you going to kind of wait till the uh, 2021 season? So we're probably going to wait to 2021, 2022, um, as, as eager as I am to just you'll, compete. I know you. You'll never make it a whole year without competing. No way. You'll be on stage. <laughs> I'll bet my bank account you're on stage next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, put it this way. Put it this way. Um, uh we are not we're definitely not dodging i don't care what the level of show if i can get into it i'm doing it um because i can tell you one thing i whoever i lose to i'm coming back and it's going to be a different story yeah and i'll do whatever i got to do whether that's you got to diet better you got to train more you got to do more car whatever needs to happen is going to happen yeah so you might be right <laughs> no way you're skipping a whole year but hey you know what you look you you made a lot of changes in a very short period of time just correcting your diet and like you said all the stuff that you hadn't didn't really know what was going on now it's going to exponentially speed up how you make progress so i think by probably by you know five six months from now you'll probably you know make more progress in that five six months than you've made in the last two years just because now you're starting to learn your body you know what works for you what doesn't work for you so uh, I, I expect big things from you, and I'm, I'm glad you contacted me, and I want to just uh, say, you know, your journey has been amazing. It's very inspirational, and hopefully a lot of people, after watching this interview, will be motivated to go to the gym and, and train even harder now. Absolutely. Dave, thank you so much, man. I appreciate the time um, and you hearing out my story. And, uh, yeah, definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Um, we are excited to compete and, 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 and add value to whatever I can and just, you know, bring sportsmanship. Good luck. Keep us updated, Antonio, and uh, we'll be watching you. Sounds good, Dave. Thank you. You have a All great right, day. All right, guys, and that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.